Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. Boys and girls, we all have our favorite skills, and if you find someone who hates on it, it is time to take out the pitchforks. We all know that runecrafting is objectively the best skill in the game, but what about the rest? In this video, we will go over how useful skills are not only for mains, but for the very first time on my channel, I will include information for Iron Men and Iron Women enjoyers. A huge thank you to my friend Steinsgate, who's a fellow maxed player, and also has a near maxed Ironman account with a staggering amount of boss KC. Without him, the Ironman section for this video wouldn't have made it, and I'm really happy to include it. So if you dislike anything on that category, feel free to flame him in the comments below. And speaking of flame, we have a few disclaimers as it is tradition for these uploads. The very first one is that, as with most opinion videos, this might not be the definitive tier list of how useful skills are, but will give you a great idea as to what you should focus on for your account. The second one is that, as I previously mentioned, this is aimed for unrestricted mains and Ironman accounts. So, if you're a Lumbridge locked 200 mil XP per chunk Tileman account who can only get one experience per day, this may not be the best guide for you. And finally, although not really a disclaimer, you can let us know what you think about the tier list you're about to watch in a civilized manner in the comments below. Guys, Raids 3 will release this Wednesday and I will be live the moment it launches. So subscribe with notifications on, join the Discord, and let's get into the final video before the Tombs of a Mascot. So, let's begin. I'm going to start by very quickly explaining how the tier list will be laid out. There are four categories, and at the very bottom we have skills which are mostly useless and for which you might get away with only getting a few requirements for quests and achievement diaries, and honestly, not touching it for a very long time. The second one is similar, but said skill will be more useful, and gaining a few extra levels might pay off in the long run. The third one are skills which are super useful for any type of account in terms of convenience, utility, and even some money making. And finally, the fourth category contains skills which are absolutely mandatory if you're gonna enjoy the end game, and if you want to make a good amount of cash for gear upgrades or even to upkeep your membership with the GP. The unrestricted main category starts off with fire making, which makes it the worst one by far. To my knowledge, this is useful for Winter Toad if hunting for the Phoenix Pet, Shades of Morton for Collection Log and Money Making with Prayer, Pyre Ships for Barbarian Training, Eternal Fires after making friends with my arm, and for the Abyssal Lantern in Guardians of the Rift. The skill cape has a nice effect which acts as a light source, but other than this, Fire Making is, in my opinion, the most useless skill in the game. Next up we have wood cutting, and not to spoil too much, but being a gathering skill for which you can basically buy logs at the grand exchange for fire making or fletching to name a few, you can get away with training this skill only for a few requirements, and that's pretty much it. As another quick side note, remember that some requirements for achievement diary cape or even some master clue scrolls will have you level up skills up to 90 or above, but if not going for those, woodcutting is not really mandatory. Fishing is next, and like the previous one, unrestricted mains can just buy their food at Grand Exchange, and fishing will be nothing but an AFK simulator at places like Barbarian Fishing, and will be pretty chill in 99 to gets. Although, not too useful later down the road. Mining is one of the most hated skills in the game, and for a good reason. Since smithing is pretty outdated, it goes hand in hand with smithing. You need level 85 to mine Runite ore yourself for items that you can wear at 40 combat stats. And since you can get ore and bars from other sources, this is only needed for requirements. Fletching follows a similar pattern. Traditionally, you would make your own ranged weapons and ammunition, but with the power of GP, you can just get them at stores or at the Grand Exchange. Definitely one of the most AFK skills you can do for an easy cape, but for utility, you're not missing out on a lot. The final skill in this category is smithing. The Giant's Foundry made it a little bit more relevant since it offers a few great untradeable rewards, but you can get them at a decent speed even without a high level. It's a nice moneymaker once you have 85 or even level 70, but even then, profit is not overwhelming. Starting off the next tier, we have crafting. This would be in the previous tier of skills, but honestly the crafting skill cape is so good that it carries it over to the next one. For mains, this is not a mandatory skill to train, but it offers some chill money-making methods on your way to one of the most useful skill capes in the game. Next we have cooking, and although you can't just buy your food at Grand Exchange, cooking is one of the easiest skills to level up, and it will even give you some profit at higher levels. Other than that, the skill as a whole is not super useful, but decent enough to put it right here. Thieving comes next, and if you think of all of the things you can do with the skill, it all comes down to money from pickpocketing various NPCs in the game, or even some random items obtained from other sources. 
This is placed above cooking because it can be a lot more engaging and it's slightly more fun. Then we have Hunter for two reasons. The first one is that despite only a few methods being viable from 1 to 99, this skill offers so much variety that diversity alone makes it very attractive. The main reason why it's here is because with a birdhouse run you will be able to level up passively and it won't take much of your time. We jump to runecrafting and I'll admit this is here because of my bias and if you don't like it you can just cope with it and leave. Jokes aside though, you can get away with leaving it at 55 for the quest cape, but with the addition of the outfit, runecrafting is now the best skilling moneymaker in the game with the right requirements. To finish off this tier, we have prayer. If you don't care too much about the 99 or recovering more prayer points per dose of prayer potion, you can pretty much leave it at 77 for augury and never touch it again. If you have some cash to spare, this skill goes by pretty quickly, but 77 is basically endgame for it for all of the prayers. Agility starts our next tier, and even though it's a pain training it, a lot of useful shortcuts in the game will pay off very quickly in terms of efficiency. You don't need to max it, but pay attention to some common activities you like doing. And take note of any requirements for agility shortcuts to make your life a lot easier. After agility we have magic, and with the 4 spellbooks available in the game, the amount of utility spells it brings is pretty insane. It's not in the highest tier simply because not every single spell is useful, but the way to 99 magic will also be super diverse, and you may not want to stop it just for a requirement. Herblor is next, and not only is it useful to make a bit of extra GP by cleaning herbs, but Raids 1 enjoyers will tell you that it's a mandatory to get the level required for overloads on your way to the Great Ohm. This could have gone in the previous category, but the fact that you can make your own potions from gathering supplies is also pretty nice. The final skill in this category is construction. The fact that you can go to other people's houses to use utility furniture means it's not the highest tier, and if you don't really want to spend a lot of money on it to level up, you can honestly stay at level 1, although we're not really trying to look like a pleb. A few key things in your house will be very useful, even if it's not top tier. And speaking of top tier, we start this one with farming. As you probably noticed, all gathering skills are bottom tier because you can just simply buy supplies on the Grand Exchange. But in comparison, farming makes a disgusting amount of money with all types of crops, and this is a must to do every time you can. With fishing, mining and woodcutting you can get tons of supplies through PVM, but farming will overshadow them in comparison in terms of profit per hour. Sad to say, but Slayer is not number one on the list, but rather number three. PVMing is super diverse, especially in the higher levels, and you don't want to miss out your chance at great drops from monsters and bosses all around the game. So keep training until you reach that 99 or even just your target goal for whatever boss you are hunting. With Slayer comes different ways to take care of monsters, and of course ranged is one of them. No matter how expensive your weapon of choice is, from a humble blowpipe all the way up to the mighty twisted bow, many enemies across the game will be easily dealt with just with this combat style. This means that my number one skill, or in this case group of skills to focus on, is melee. This is my favorite combat style because of how diverse it is in terms of weaponry, and of course an absolute must do when it comes to both Slayer and to content like Chambers, the Theater of Blood, and of course the upcoming Tombs of a Mascot. Alright fellas, that's pretty much it about unrestricted main accounts. But what about Ironman? What you're about to watch is my friend Steinsgate tier list, and the only thing to note is that these are just order by category, and the order in the tier itself it doesn't really matter as they are all relevant to their respective category. So, here we go. It seems like mining is also fairly cringe for Ironman because you can basically get a lot of resources from drops from PVM, and honestly, it's such a pain in the ass to train. Even though it's a gathering skill that sounds like a priority, the fact that we can get ore from other sources means that you will need this mostly for requirements. Related to mining, we have smithing. And like previously, you won't really be making your own armor to wear, as most of the things you make will be purely for experience and requirements. I can see this being useful for blowpipe darts and maybe for high alking, but that's about it. And also in this tier we have woodcutting. Now, another gathering skill here might sound weird, but because of the Kingdom of Miscellanea resources and the fact that you can get logs and planks from other places means that you won't go too dry on logs or planks. Obviously, if you need these things for fletching and construction, it would be a good idea to manually get them if focusing on either skill. Up next we have the melee combat stats, hit points included. Because what's important about these ones is able to wear both weapons and armor that will be needed for PVMing and especially Slayer. Obviously higher levels matter in terms of accuracy, max hits and defense, but for now only needed for weapons and armor requirements. On the same page we have Prayer. Just like an unrestricted main, this skill is only really needed to max at level 77 for efficiency, and any level after that will be extra help. 
As an Ironman, this sounds rather painful to train just like the artisan skills, but level 77 will be more than enough granted you get lucky at the chambers for those scrolls. Next we have Fletching, and just like Smithing when we talked about darts, this is one of the few times in which you will need this skill outside of the requirements. This is not high up there because you can basically get weapons like a magic shortbow and rune crossbow from other sources, but not totally useless. Fire making is our next skill, and it goes here because it's super useful for early level money making, and of course gather some initial supplies from Wintertone. I'm guessing that if Wintertoad wasn't a thing, it would be in the previous tier, but because of how important some of those early drops can be, it goes right here. This is followed by Hunter mainly because of PVM and herbs. What this means is that if you want to train ranged super fast, you will need to catch your own Chinchampas, and also for some niche methods like the Kriara Chinning method, as well as Herbivore to get herbs outside of farming and Slayer. And of course, you can't go wrong with some birdhouse runs too. Starting off the next tier, we have ranged. This is my friend's favorite combat style, as he ranks it the best out of all the combat triangle. And the amount of times you will need it at any level of PVM encounters makes it incredibly versatile. We continue with the best skill in the game being a runecrafting. Of course, you can get tons of runes from monster drops and even some basic runes from shops all around the game. But eventually you'll run out of them and you'll have to make your own. With the addition of Guardians of the Rift, making them has never been easier. Next comes thieving, and this is also important for some starting cash you can get out of pickpocketing. And outside some important requirements like Pyramid Plunder for example, eventually you will have to pickpocket master farmers to upkeep your seed stash, and the higher level the better. To finish off this tier we have cooking. And spoiler alert, since fishing is on the next category, you will need decent levels to cook all of your food, and of course not to burn so many of them. Whether it be from actual fishing, temporos, or even some PVM sources, food will always be mandatory for any account. Now, since Ironmen stand alone, you will need a house with all important pieces of furniture since you actually can't go to other people's houses for teleports, altars, and so on. Leveling this up will be absolutely essential and one crucial goal you will have to work towards over the progression of your account. For unrestricted accounts, agility might not be as useful, but for Ironman it is an absolutely mandatory one not just for shortcuts. But also if you want to maintain a chunky stack of stamina potions, rooftop agility will be essential to make them. Get the required herb lore level in order to get this absolute must for your account. And speaking of herb lore, no artisan skill is more important than this one for you to make every single potion in your account with your own pixelated hands. With no grand exchange to work with, not a lot needs to be said about this skill since we all know how crucial potions are. All of those potions will mostly be useful for Slayer, and if you want to progress your account in terms of drops, this skill is imperative for you to unlock big weapons and armor. On an unrestricted account it's easy to buy a pair of primordial boots for example when you have the levels to wear them, but for Ironman you will need both a dragon boots and a cheeky primordial crystal for you to obtain yourself. All that slayer and combat can't be done without food, and of course fishing comes next on the list. You can get fish from some PVM sources, but you will go through your food quicker especially at higher levels, and for that we will need to catch a lot of it and cook it later on. So focus on this while AFKing or doing something else. As we mentioned before, potions are absolutely crucial for your account, and what a better way to obtain it than through farm runs. Not only herbs, but any type of crop you need for something similar, like limpward roots, snapegrass, papaya, coconuts, and much more, will be more consistently obtained through farming. For the second to last spot we have magic. For an unrestricted main, I said that this is not super useful, but Ironman might have a lot more uses for spells in the four available books. The utility this skill offers in terms of teleportation and other benefits for your account make it crucial for you to level up and maybe even max out. Last but definitely not least, a great skill for Ironman accounts is crafting, and it's basically because you will need to make your own jewelry from scratch. Whether it be for teleports, other utility uses such as bracelets of slaughter and expedition, and many more that will keep you busy even after you get that skill cape, and more importantly if you want all 4 pieces of Zenite jewelry, you will need to achieve a high level to make them. Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it for this video, thank you so much for watching and making it this far. If that was the case, leave a comment including the word carpet, and tell me what your most useful skill is in old school runescape. People who leave the keyword will be entered in a giveaway to win a bond, and I will announce the winner on Friday right here in the comments. So, good luck to you all. Before we end, I want to give a chunky thank you to all of my channel members. You absolute legends have no idea how much your support means to me, and I hope to keep providing amazing content for you in the future. 
You can click the join button below to support this channel monetarily and get a ton of cool perks and benefits for your pledge. In the next video, I will show you my very first impressions and my day one experience with the newest raid, the Tombs of a Mascot, as I will be streaming it every single day for you guys and hopefully we get some decent drops. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you then. Pa -pa -pa -pa. Peace.